Okay, so here's the last fundamental problem, and um, it's uh, it's an interesting problem. Okay, so we've got this piece, all right, G, kind of the gold piece there, and it's it's rotating, and so it's moving in a circular path, which we've we've been seeing that before. So. Oops. It's been moving in this in a circular path, okay? And so that means we really want to have a normal and a tangential direction like this. So that takes care of our, our directions, okay? Now, I want to get rid of those things because uh, the drawing is going to get kind of messy. So maybe I'll scoot that over here. So here's our normal. And our tangential is going to be upwards. All right. Sort of like that. Can't get my eraser. Forgot to pull my microphone over. Sorry about that. Um, so now let's get our other forces that are at, at play here. And... Um, so we get the low hanging fruit and our weight right here, mg. And um, then over here, we're going to say we've got some bx. Okay. And down here, we're going to have some dx. Oops, I don't want to put it right there. Put it here. Okay. But look at this. What the heck is going on here? Well, what that means is something is pushing up. Now, we don't know what it is, but there's an axle or a, some force somewhere generating a moment on that thing. Boom. And because that is rotating upwards, are trying to rotate upwards, then that means we actually have to put in, oops, we have to put in a force here. Let me draw that better. It's going to get too messy if I'm not careful. DY. Okay. So I've got a DY upwards like that. So now I've, I've got two vertical forces this time which both happen to be in the tangential direction. So I've got mg down, I've got dy up, I've got dx and bx pulling this thing around this way. Okay. Now, let's start in a different spot. Okay. Wanted to erase that guy. Let's start with our moment, okay? Let's take a look at our moment. So if we are rotating about the center of mass, there's no moment due to the, the weight of the object, but dx is going to provide a moment, and dx is going to provide a moment that's positive. So we can write that in here. So positive d... I, know, I want a different color. So positive dx, and it is a distance of 0.4. And then bx is going to be a negative, create a negative moment, and it's a distance of 0.4. Okay, but look out for dy. dy is offset from the center of mass, which means it's going to create a moment. And it's going to create a positive moment. So we're going to have plus dy, and it's only a distance of 0.1 out there. Okay. So let me rewrite that just a little bit, try to clean it up a bit. 0.4 dx minus 0.4 bx, and then plus 0.1 dy, and all that is equal to zero. 
Now, notice if we didn't have dy, dx and bx are are, are, are equal. That's it. That's all we got. Okay. And we've seen that twice before. We saw it in the last fundamental problem and we saw it in the example problem that I worked for you. But here now this dy thing kind of throws us off a little bit because the dy and the reason for that is the dy is trying to make this thing rotate here. And that means bx is going to have to do a little bit more than dx in order to compensate for this thing trying to rotate on us. Okay, so we're going to get a little bit more out of out of B. Maybe you can even imagine um, if this was our this was our component going up and down. Okay, if we've got this force here, okay, that force is going to try and push it since it's offset. So we're going to have to have competing forces generating a counter moment against this guy right here. Okay, so we expect BX should be a little bit bigger. Now, let's figure out what DY actually is. Okay, DY comes from the moment. Okay, that bar is lifting. That bar is lifting. And so normally when we count, calculate moment, we say we've got a force and a radial arm. Okay, and, and that radial arm and the force, uh, R times F gives us our moment. But we're going to go backwards with it this time. And so what we're going to do here is we're going to say we've got 0.4 dx minus 0.4 bx plus 0.1. And we're going to divide the moment, which is 450, by the radial arm which is 0.6. Oop. Set that equal to zero. Okay. So take pause the video and think through that carefully. Make sure that that makes sense to you. Okay. Let me write it over here in a different color what we've done. All right. So normally we say that a moment is a force times a distance. We've just turned that around to say our force, therefore, has to be equal to this. Okay. All right. So 0.4 dx minus 0.4 bx. And when you work all that stuff out, it turns into 75, which is kind of a surprise. Okay. One equation, two unknowns, need more stuff. So let's come up to our normal force equation. All right, and so now our normal forces that we have operating on this thing are going to be BX. That needs to be a little bit smaller, though. Going to have a problem. It needs to be BX plus DX. And those are the only horizontal forces acting, so that has to be our M omega squared. Okay, um, and again, this time we could choose positive because the omega is in the same direction as the um, our, our unit vector for the normal. And so we've got M omega squared R, just like that, okay? Now, if we chase the math on that, okay, what I want you to see here is that's enough now algebraically. I got dx, dx, I got bx, I got b, 
<laughs> I did it backwards, but you, I think you understand what I mean. Anyway, I've got my two equations and my two unknowns there. And um, so I can figure out uh, what that is. And when I chase the numbers on that, then I get that BX is equal to 633.7. Okay, so that's way too many sig figs, but we're going to let it pass for the moment. And that, whoops, I don't know what I was thinking there. DX is going to be 446 and a quarter. Okay, so one last thing that we need to get, okay, because it asks us for the, um, uh, we'll ask for the angular acceleration, okay? And so um, we got to look at the tangential forces. So we've got the weight down. Okay, so we've got minus mg down plus dy is up. Okay, so let's work through figure out what's going on. I really need to get rid of this um, blue. I don't know if I can just get, no, I'm smart. That guy right there, no. Okay. Well, I got rid of more than I wanted to, but we'll have to live with it. Okay, anyway, um, upwards tangential is positive, okay? But my alpha, that's a motion this way, is negative. So I gotta use negative here when I get to my equation. So we have negative m, R alpha. Okay, I already know what dy is. Um, R is 0.6. Okay, it's 0.6 because that's the actual radius of my circular motion. Okay, be careful here because it looks like the radius might be 0.7 this whole thing here except um, it's it's not the way the thing is rigged um, that it's as if there's a pivot right here so I've got 0.6 is how G is going to be moving on me okay so everything on that bar is moving in a circle and the radius of the circular path is 0.6. I know that probably seems weird, but remember that that, that bar is not rotating, okay? If the bar were rotating as it went, okay, like this, then the different points on there would have different radii of curvature. But since the whole thing is moving in a certain way, then every point on there has the same radius of curvature. All right. So you might need to think about that just a little bit more as you work through that. Okay. Uh, anyway, when you go through all of that, alpha turns out to be 8.65. Okay. Um, negative on there, of course. Yeah. I like.